All right, welcome to Talk Jiu-Jitsu with host Uki Mike, Joy Boreski, and me, Jordan Pressinger from Jordan Teaches Jiu-Jitsu. Today we have a great episode for you guys, and we're going to talk about uh, people we find annoying in Jiu-Jitsu, um, which is a lot of people. <laughs> no, it's not that many people. Um, and just a you know interesting topic. Hope we don't offend anyone. Um, but yeah, you know, there you know with any sport or any um, niche or any like activity, there's people that uh, can be a little bit annoying. And jiu-jitsu is no exception. And uh, I guess we'll just start with a really easy one, uh, especially as an instructor. I find this really annoying, which is like when people kind of like criticize the technique or they don't believe in the technique. You know, I, I was uh, at a gym a while ago, and there was just there's this white belt that, you know, not like questioning the technique, but you know, kind of being like, oh, I would just go to side control, or Danahar says this, Danahar says that, or whatever, and. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit annoying, you know, like, I think it's good to ask questions and, you know, not like take what your instructor says kind of as like, as like gospel, because sometimes they can be wrong. But if if you've been training like six months or barely at all, and you think, you know, more than more than the instructor or, you know, Danahar said this and, and that's and then, you know, maybe, maybe it's out of context that he said something that, you know, you think you disagree with your instructor with. So I think that's the most annoying uh, kind of person. Um, and the best example to start with, I don't know, does that happen to you very often, Joey, where you get like a student or like a, or you, yeah, you're teaching and someone's just like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about that. It's like, I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it comes up every now and then. Usually if I'm showing something like it's like maybe a little, like a little more niche or like people will be like, I don't think that works. And it's like, well, like anything, it's going to work for some people and it's not going to work for other people. I find the irony of those people though, who like question everything their instructor says is they always have someone like a Danaher or a Gordon Ryan where they just like completely unquestionably believe everything they say. Like, like you said, they'll be like Danaher said this and it's like, you're not going to do any like research on this. You're not going to test it out. Maybe like troubleshoot it with your coach. It's just like, Nope. Danaher said it must be right. Can't be wrong. Yeah, exactly. And I think during white belt, you're pretty much just surviving. I mean, you should be listening to every word your coach is saying and not be, I mean, yes, watch lots of videos and, and get lots of uh, different ideas. But I mean, in class, do what your instructor says, basically, if you've been doing it for a few months. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to techniques, like, you know, it's like, what if they do this? What if they, what if they do that? Well, it's, you know, you do something else. Like, you might need to transition because they countered correctly. And now that's not available. Like, this is hard. People don't uh, quite get that in their head all the time. It's like, just because you are learning a technique, it's not like you can just press a button and, you know, you hit that technique. It's always going to be hard. Just is always going to be hard. So, yeah, I think that, like, plays a factor into it. Um, that yeah, people need to realize, and there's always different variables, you know, in jujitsu. Like, well, you could go on forever if somebody said, "Well, what if they do this?" Well, th- we're not teaching that right now. We're teaching this right now. We'll get to that later, our yeah. next class, right? You know? And it kind of becomes like an RPG almost, where it's like, uh, where it's like that, you know, where it's like, well, "What do they do this? Why do that? And then, what do they do this? Why do that?" And it's just, you know, it's just this like endless amounts of like countering the counters, and. Um, it can be like a waste of time um, just to, you know, do that constantly. But yeah, that's think, like one. Yes. I think there's like a, a point where like the what if can be useful. Like uh, I'm going to try and find an example here. Like if we're teaching like, let's say a knee slide pass and you're like, all right, I've got my underhook. I'm knee cutting. You know, the last step is to like connect chest to chest, hip to hip kind of thing. Uh, and the person goes, hey, what happens if you get they you lose the underhook at any point during this? Like, let's say the person pummels and gets the underhook that's a really valid question like that that's super important because it's going to happen you know most of the time it's like hey we gotta not continue to just do this knee slide as is and not change anything like if if they get the underhook at any process point during this process we must do something different and like that can be a really valuable question because it's something that comes up but it's like the ones for me are like all right we have this grip and they go what if their hands are grabbed together what if they're doing this what if you know what if they have their collar and you're like hey listen just do the thing and then we can troubleshoot or why don't you just troubleshoot with your partner? Like that's the one that always gets me is people ask uh, like these, what if guys they'll ask for like all these little variations. Like, you know, you'll be showing like uh, an arm bar grip break where you're breaking if they have their hands together and they go, well, what if their hands are in an S grip or a gable grip or what if they have the forearm and you're like, Hey, why don't you just grab your partner and have him try the different grips and see if you can break them. Like you shouldn't need me to give you an answer to every little minor detail and problem. Like at some point it is important for students to take that, like 
problem solving on themselves and like do some work yourselves that isn't just given to you. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes on my YouTube channel, people like once in a while, they'll say, um, you know, I went too fast or like they had to kind of like rewind and like watch it again to make sure they got it in their head. And it's like, well, that's okay. You know, if, if you need to think about it, um, I'm not giving you every single answer um, to it and making like, you know, it just like unbelievably clear where I had to spend like, you know, so long making like a 20 minute video. Like it's okay to, to re rewind and go and, you know, yeah, figure it out yourself kind of, you know, you can't like spoon feed everyone. It's definitely like a, a fine line between what if where it's annoying and what if where it's like actually helpful, you know, because that it can be very helpful. Like one good example, it didn't, it didn't annoy me. I just remember this from a long time ago when I started teaching, uh, I was a blue belt and I taught how to uh, staple uh, the near side arm in uh, side control. And someone asked me, well, what if like, they're holding you really tight and you can't uh, posture your knee up to get it on the other side of their arm. And it's like, well, then you can't do that. You know, <laughs> if they're, if they're countering in a way where you can't get what you want to do, then that's just, sometimes it's just the answer. Then you can't do it. That's, you know, what if you're trying to choke someone and you can't get underneath their neck? Well, then you can't choke them. You know, if they're, if they're doing a good job defending. Yeah. You can't choke them. Uh, maybe try an arm bar. Right. So yeah, fine line. So, Definitely no listeners or viewers should go and like not ask questions and not ask what ifs. It's just like you can feel when someone's doing it from this like angle where it's just like you're kind of annoying me right now. Right. And so, yeah, it's, they're trying to catch some might be trying to catch the teacher and see if see if I can stump them. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Some smart ass might be doing that. Yeah. It comes down to like attitude and inten uh, intention. And like I said, you can definitely feel it. Um, yeah, I guess who else is annoying? Uh, people. Well, yeah. I was going to say, I'm part of a club that some might say is, is annoying in the discord for, uh, this people say it's annoying. It's the jujitsu save my life club and I'll stay, I'll stick by it. I know it's uh, kind of cliche right now. I've seen it online. Craig Jones makes fun of it all the time, but I will stick by it. It has greatly uh, improved my life and in many ways saved it. But, uh, some people might say that that's an annoying saying as well. Well, people like that are cynical because absolutely it can have such a positive influence on your life. And it's not necessarily like the grappling itself. It's just being part of a community. And I yeah. think everyone, we talked about it before, everyone needs a third place yeah. and a third place can be life-changing, right? You have your work, you have your home. If you don't have somewhere to socialize, um, it can be very depressing. So uh, yeah, it can definitely change your life. Those people are very cynical. Um, yeah, screw them. Another good one, <laughs> the, the kind of people that are like, uh, they think they're warriors and they're this badass alpha male because they train jujitsu. Um, but it's like, calm down, you know, it's just jujitsu. But they're writing things like, you know, uh, the, sh the shark, no, what is it like the ocean? I, I, I can't remember it. Joey, do you know it's like the oh, ocean is I know. my... It's, it's those weird like motivational quote style things. It's oh, like the ocean is gosh. my playground and I'm the shark and you don't know how to swim or some, yeah. some shit like that, right? Yeah, it's like calm down, you know, especially it's usually... Um, like white belts and blue belts, usually middle-aged, no offense to middle-aged people. I'm kind of getting close to middle-aged, but yeah, it's usually like Gen X, you know, yeah. that are, I shit on Gen X all the time. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. No, but, no offense taken. But, but no, it's definitely that generation that, yeah, these things are super cool because they train jujitsu, but I don't think I'm cool. And I think I'm pretty good at jujitsu. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, another thing, uh, well, just something interesting. I, I saw on a website, it listed the, um, like jujitsu personalities or jujitsu, like, I don't know what the word is influencers, I guess. And, uh, the most amount of followers over all the platforms. And I was number 47, which is pretty cool to be yeah. top 50 in the world. Damn. Yeah. Dylan Dennis is number one. So yeah, I want to beat him. I kind of like, what the hell Dylan Dennis is be beating me, but obviously, you know, Connor and, and the stuff he does, but like well, his Twitter, his last Twitter, uh, you know, tirade that made him skyrocket, right? Everybody knows him now over that with uh, the Paul brothers there. Yeah, yeah, that definitely gained him popularity. But I think he also bought followers because he has so many Instagram followers. I don't think they're all organic. Oh, no. Yeah, and if you buy them, it's not a good idea because it, it's not great for the algorithm for you because there are these people that there's this, uh, they follow you, but then they don't like interact with your stuff or they're just bots. So, like, yeah, it's not great for, uh, it's actually not a smart idea to yeah. do. But uh, yeah, number 47. And I wrote a post on Facebook because I was just uh, being introspective. And I thought, I, I said, that's, you know, it's pretty cool to be top 50. I, I'm actually just below Marcelo Garcia, which is 
really cool to me. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, but like I wrote like, does it ever get to my head? And it absolutely doesn't because like I do not think that I'm cool or like anything. Like it's I make videos on my laptop and people watch them and that's cool. But like I don't think I'm cool. And if anything, I don't give myself enough credit. Like I feel like I'm only as good as my last video. So if I haven't posted a video in a while, especially one that's a banger, it's like I really don't feel like uh anything significant, you know, which yeah. I need to kind of like <sighs> Because so, some people would think I'm cocky, but it's almost like the opposite where like I don't give myself enough credit at all So, um, yeah, if I don't think I'm cool then people training three days a week in pajamas, you know that th They're not you guys aren't that it's not that cool either, you know So yeah Joey, yeah, I mean like, you know as a group of guys who get together and either dress up in pajamas or like superhero looking spandex costumes and roll around on the floor with people like eh, Let's not take it too seriously. Yeah yeah, I think that like um, just in general, the alpha male thing is really annoying. And Craig Jones spoke on this too that there's like an epidemic of alpha males. You know, people that just yeah they think they're alphas, but like none of you guys are alphas. You know what what's an alpha in, in the first place? Even you know like being like uh, doing like manly stuff or whatever, right? The, the, the being a true alpha is not acting like one and not even saying you're one, right? Because yeah. that's the most lame thing you can do is say you're an alpha. And, uh, yeah, those kind of people, they just, um, I don't know. I, those are the people I can't stand the most. It's like when people take jiu-jitsu like too serious and martial arts too serious, it kind of just like, um, bothers me. It's like, calm down. Like I can beat you up and I don't take it that serious. So just like calm down, enjoy the sport. And you're not some big shot because yeah, you train in pajamas or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, get off your high horse. I took it pretty seriously when I first started. I mean, like I bought, you know, three outfits and the most expensive ones I could find. And I went on and had to get the best no gi stuff. And now it's just like, I'll go to, um, the sponsor there. What's, uh, X Marshall. X Marshall. I'll go to X Marshall, or sometimes I go to Wish and buy them for three dollars. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't really matter. Whatever is in the drawer, I'll grab. It doesn't matter anymore. But when I first started, I took it maybe a little bit too seriously. Yeah, it can happen. I mean, it's it's also easy to criticize when you've been there, which I feel like I've been there too. As like a white belt and blue belt, you know, I wanted to get like jiu-jitsu shirts so bad because I thought it'd be so cool. Everyone could see I trained jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah, there you go, just like that. <laughs> and now I couldn't care less, you know? It's I couldn't care less about people knowing that when I'm out in public or whatever. Yeah. Um, and plus the ears kind of identifying uh, anyways. Um, but yeah, it's like... I don't know. That hits on another annoying topic. Like, look at Steve-O. He's trying to get um, cauliflower ear. Like, he's getting plates slammed into his ear, people punching him in the head. Like, you shouldn't try to get it. But I think when you get it, yeah, it looks cool, whatever. But, I mean, trying to get it, that's pretty fucking lame, I think. Yeah, it is super lame. And, yeah, like, to me, like, I don't care at all if my ears get worse. I don't care if they stay where they are or if I even had them in the first place. It's just, like, it's whatever. I don't think that they make a big difference either way sometimes because sometimes people are very scared of getting cauliflower year which you know if they that's how they feel that's that's 100 percent fine but like it's not that big of a deal either way yeah. i think yeah. no, i get why he's doing it he's got his uh podcast he's got he's an extreme guy who's on jackass they do everything to the extreme so i get why he's doing it but i've known other guys that are like they're trying to get it on purpose you know just it will come in time believe me yeah, Nikki just started getting a little bit of some, and I think girls in general don't really get as much because they have softer ears, um, which I'm pretty sure that's true at least. I think that's why. But uh, yeah, she's been like nine years without any, and she's starting to get some on her right ear. She's like, oh shit, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. I've never seen a girl with uh, like really bad cauliflower ear. No, either have I, when I think about it. No, some of the MMA make... girls have it, but you don't see oh, it yeah. in grappling. Yeah, it's yeah, there... really strange. There was that one uh, that had it in a UFC fight, and someone punched her in the ear. Exploded. Exploded. Yeah, yeah it's it. blood, blood everywhere. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, so who else is annoying? Uh, oh, man, I got one. This one, Jordan, you'll probably be able to maybe relate to a little more than Mike, but it's the people who email me like a 100 times about trying a trial class. Mm. Like I've had people who message me, and they'll be like, hey, you know, I'm interested in trying a trial class. Like, What day should I come out? Like, my response is always the same, like, you know, thanks for your interest in the gym. Come on out any night to any of our classes. You're more than welcome, like, whatever night. Like, you don't have to schedule a particular night. And they'll message back, like, oh, is it cool if I come out Monday? And I'll be like, yeah, you know, Monday's cool. Any night is fine. And then they'll be like, all right, what about Tuesday? I'm like, yes, any night, whatever night you want. And, of course, the next email comes back, could I come in Wednesday? And I'm like, oh, my God, man, like, just 
get in the gym or don't come. Like, it's up to you. <laughs> I don't have time to go back and forth with you a thousand times trying to try, like schedule you to come in for a trial class. Like, just show up and we'll deal with it when you're here. Or the yeah, people I'm- who, like, I'm sure you get it too, where they're like, you know, they've got, they schedule a class. They're like, yeah, I'll be there tonight. I'll be there tonight for sure. And then they never show up. And then, like, three days later, you'll hear from them and they're like, oh, yeah, sorry, something came up, but I'll be there tonight. And they never show up. And you're like, just, Show up. Stop was, wasting my time. I was yeah. going to mention that the people that book private lessons, then cancel and then they book it and then cancel just so they can tell people, Hey, I got a private lesson. I'm doing some jujitsu or some kickboxing tonight. It's the same when I was a tattoo artist, they would just want that story. They go, yeah, I'm getting a tattoo this week. And then they'd cancel. I'm getting a tattoo next week. And they just want to be cool with their friends. So they have a story to tell them. Yeah. Some people just want to feel like a big deal. And sometimes people give me like a, like a full like life story almost to like before they train as if it like makes a difference, you know, <laughs> but it's like, I don't care. Um, you know, cause it, it's not in a way of like, it's like 200 other people here too. Right? Yeah, exactly. I got other people to care about too. And like, they're just telling me like, uh, their whole, yeah, their whole history. And it's like, you can train just like anyone else. It doesn't matter, you know, this or that in your life, just come train, you know, yeah. like it's not that big of a deal. It might know? be different if they have a specific injury and they're asking yeah. you, Hey, you know, like my rotator cuff is, is pooched. Can I, do this and you know they don't know they're noobs right so they don't know no that's definitely different it's more like people that they're kind of telling you in a way like i'm something special you should be uh you know excited i'm coming to train and i'm coming to i'm going to be a big deal and it's no you're probably not going to come in the first place because if you're kind of starting off with that mentality and and all that probably you're not going to stick around so well there are stories of a guy that used to uh, come here and he thought that he would get his blue belt the day he walked through the door because he watched ufc and thought he could handle himself and that absolutely he le- legit thought he would get his blue belt roll the teacher roll you and think you're just going to be like you're you're a goddamn purple belt almost and uh that did not happen he got his ass handed to him yeah. he joined and he's you know he became a blue belt but uh yeah he learned very quickly those those people are a little little funny at the start too yeah you got to tell me after i'm not i can't i can't think of who it is i'll tell you tell exactly me after. After, but yeah. no yeah, i was i gotta know you i gotta hear who this is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but no i was the same way but, yeah i was yeah. gonna ask you didn't you go in and think i'm just gonna fuck the teacher up and he's just gonna hand me a black belt yeah well i didn't think i'd you know <laughs> fuck the teacher up more so i thought that i would just do well against them and, and do well against everyone else and they would literally hand me a purple belt and i thought that because i watched ufc and because okay i'm athletic all that kind of stuff and then it was a big eye opener um, oh yeah no, I'm nothing special. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of did the same thing, uh, where I didn't give like a life story, but I kind of gave like a little bit of history. You know, I've been playing soccer a long time, you know, I'm really into UFC, that kind of stuff. And I don't know. Yeah. There's no real point of like saying any of that stuff. Like you have to prove your worth, uh, on the mats and by coming at, you know, like consistently and becoming something you don't start off as anything everyone starts off at the bottom so yeah so us shitting on all these guys we're talking about we've all been these guys so don't take offense to anything that we're saying guys yeah yeah that's the thing like like i said like we can speak through experience and find it more annoying because we've been there and uh yeah we've been the annoying person so it's yeah very relatable for us and uh yeah that's uh but joey you should book people in on specific days as like a gym owner that's like try now i'm I'm trying to get them in uh i find i don't know let's actually i'll see if you agree because i think this is interesting when someone's trying grappling for the first time like they've never done jujitsu at all before they've never done anything would you prefer them to come on a no gi day or a gi day um usually gi yeah um just because i don't know it's kind of like slower and it's also feels a little bit more traditional. Um, I, yeah, I think that that's usually best for new people personally. Is it age dependent? Um, like if they're a younger athletic type guy, would you say try no gi and an older middle-aged gentleman like myself, try gi? Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. yeah. But like Nikki handles all that stuff now, but like back in the day, um, I did and I would always try to get people for gi also because it's the most, in my opinion, like, well, no, at my gym, at least we do the most fundamentals in the gi and then no gi sometimes a little more intermediates kind of stuff. So, um, just say like I'm teaching like Kimura trap and no gi, right? And my, that's probably not the best first class for a, uh, for a, a beginner. Right. Yeah. But then like today I taught gi class and I taught back escapes. Well, that's going to be a good one for a beginner, but that's more dependent on like the gym itself and the instructor. So everyone can do it different for sure. Yeah, we usually I try and get people to come in for no gi just because I find the barrier to entry is a little bit lower. Like 
you know, what I'm sure you used to get all the time. People ask like, well, what do I need to do or bring? Or like, what should I do? And I'm like, you come to a Nogi class, like honestly, shorts and a t-shirt, you're good to go. Bring some water maybe if you want it. Like we have like a water fountain in the gym. So like, you don't even have to bring that. Like just come with shorts and a t-shirt and sign our waiver and you're good to go. But, yeah. Uh, I find the geese like just a, for new people too. They're like, oh, this thing could be uncomfortable. Like I don't want to wear this giant robe. Yeah, but I also think that it kind of slows people down uh, in the sense of in no gi, I feel like they're way more wild when they first start. But when they're wearing a gi, it's almost like good that they feel a little bit uncomfortable. It kind of like gets in their head a little bit like, okay, this is something I'm not used to whatsoever. I can't just be like uh, absolutely crazy. Um, and you can control them a little bit better too. But uh, yeah, that's what I find at least. There, there was a... Um, there was speaking of like annoying people there was like an, an, this guy that was messaging one of our members saying um that he was going to come to jiu-jitsu and basically he was going to like smash all our grapplers and he, you know and he's going to do striking and he's gonna, he wants to do like mma rounds with like the grapplers or whatever and he's never done striking before either or jiu-jitsu and like some people are just crazy and think that yeah, yeah they think they can fight and um even if that's true if you think that like don't tell people that that's like the worst first impression yeah because i wanted him to come really bad like i was like oh this is gonna be fun <laughs> you know like grappling with him or, or sparring with him it's gonna be a great time but um you know he kind of screws himself that way because not that i'm gonna go harder and hurt him or anything but i'm definitely gonna show him that uh he doesn't know shit and uh and that he needs to be a little more humble so yeah like that guy he never ended up coming but i wish he would have <laughs> dude yeah, combat sports are wild man we just yeah. like Nothing else in life would people never train, never practice, never do, and just assume they could beat world champions at. Like, it's something about fighting. You'll get guys who've never fought before in their lives who are like, yeah, I just I just beat people up. I wouldn't mind. But then, like, you would never be like, oh, yeah, I've never played hockey before in my life. I'm sure I'd win a gold medal in Olympic speed skating. Like, you don't know how to skate. You've never been on ice. Why would you think that? But with fighting, for some reason, people just have this, like, deluded sense that they can just beat everyone even if they don't train it's really weird it's like well, super unique to this literally the other day uh petrina and i were teaching a, a class to a bunch of teenagers and beforehand i wanted her to go over the kickboxing stuff with me because i don't do kickboxing and and we were kind of sparring a little bit and i thought i could throw a punch or slip no i cannot I don't train it. I cannot. I thought I could. I ca absolutely cannot. And I'm, I'd say I'm probably one of the average guys. And I used to take like, you know, karate and shit like that back in the day. I thought I could throw and kick. Uh, no, I cannot. And neither can you if you don't train. Well, I think it goes both ways too, where people, they've been in street fights before and they think that they can uh, enter martial arts and be very successful. But I think it goes the other way too, where people can train martial arts and then think that they're going to be more successful than they are in a street fight. All right. Unless you train like literally like MMA, like yeah. you train jujitsu, kickboxing, wrestling, and you do MMA rounds, then in a real fight, um, definitely you're, you're going to go into it with, uh, an advantage and not that with, with only jujitsu, like, do you not, like you, you don't not have an advantage, but it's just not as much as you think it is. It's yeah. not like you can just go just own anyone there. Right. And it's, cause some people do this too. And which I used to as well, where you, you'd be like in a room with like all these other guys or whatever. And you'd be like, I can beat up I all know, of I you. I knew you were going to say yeah. sizing them up. Yeah. But like in reality, um, if you only train jiu-jitsu in your, like a white or blue belt, that's probably not true. Probably um, there's going to be some bigger guys there or just athletic guys where if you were to actually fight them, fight them you might not be able to get them to the ground. Yeah. It might not go to the ground. Even if you do get them to the ground and say you're on the bottom, they're punching you. Um, it's going to go a lot different than you think it is. Yeah. So yeah, as, as a purple belt in jujitsu, I by no means think that I am a superhero. I, I will avoid a fight as much as I possibly can. It's the absolute last resort if I have to. Yeah. I mean, I do have that mentality a little bit, not that I size people <laughs> up, but like I can go into a room being like fully comfortable that, um, if there was, was going to be a fight, I'm not too worried. Hey, you've, I, you've had MMA fights, you've had yeah. kickboxing fights, jiu-jitsu, you know, so you've, you've, you've done it all, right? Like I've only done jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and that's the yeah. thing, exactly, because I, cause I do it all. I know what to expect. Um, and yeah, it's just like street fights aren't just jiu-jitsu or they're not just striking through all of it. And it's more than just MMA too because, um, like for example, like BJ Penn has gotten knocked out. Yep. In street fights, yet he was a former UFC lightweight champion, yeah, and two uh, different divisions. Yeah, 
yeah, I think because things are just so di- so different. You don't, you know, touch gloves and then you're in your stance ready to go. It's it's like a wild, chaotic thing, and you might get clipped. Um, and even if you're a good striker, yeah, you, you might uh, you might get clipped. It's still possible. Well, you get a 220 pound athletic white belt that's got a wild hair up his ass. I mean, they're like holding onto a greased pig and nogi. It's it's it can be pretty crazy. I don't know for you. I'm sure it's a lot easier, but for me, I get a guy that's super athletic. That's over 200 pounds. I'm 160 pounds. It's, it's, it can be hard to control them sometimes. Well, that reminds, that reminds me of another annoying type of person. People that complain that, uh, it's sweaty and ogi where it's <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'll get something on them or I'll escape something. And they're like, Oh, it's so sweaty. It's like, it's sweaty for me too. Yeah. You know, it's sweaty for both of us. And if I was successful, um, despite the sweat, then don't blame the sweat, yeah. right? I find that really annoying. I hate when people say that. It's like when people say, this hasn't happened in a long time, but like back in the day, they'd be like, oh, you're so strong or, or whatever. You know, they're kind of saying that that's why you're beating yeah. them, right? And it's the same thing. It's like the reason you're beating them is because of the sweat. It's like, no, like I'm just beating you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's wild. Annoying. I tell everyone the only reason you beat me is because you're sweaty and stronger than me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the stronger definitely plays a factor. Um, and I guess like, you know, I said before, I think I do thrive in the sweat. So I think I have an advantage that way. Like I just, I don't know, I can just, I can just take rips, even if it's like sweaty. I'm just, I, I, I do a good job of it. But it's also because, you know, like black belt. So like if a yeah. you know, blue belt's complaining it's sweaty, well, it's like, you know, just get better at your technique despite the sweat, right? You know, figure it out. Yeah, the sweat's never bothered me at all. I've had more drip in my eye, ear, mouth. Uh, you get used to it after a while. Yeah, I yeah. actually prefer nogi when it's sweaty. Like, I, one of my things that I hate about nogi is, like, the first couple of rounds before anyone's warm and loose and, like, everyone's skin is dry. And if you're not wearing spats, like, it literally just sticks to each other. Like, yeah. am I the only one who gets this? Because, like, I've said this to other people and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, like, when I'm super dry, like, I feel sticky. I get what you mean. Yeah, you can agree. slip a choke in under the under the neck sometimes a little easier if it's greased up with sweat, sure. Yeah, or yeah. even like um yeah, I agree because even certain techniques are harder to get when uh when it's not sweaty and ogi. So I'll be like, This is way easier to do when you're sweaty and and the but they're practicing not sweaty, so it might feel a little bit harder or, or less fluid and it sounds like I'm making like an excuse like this technique doesn't really work. It only works if you're sweaty, but it's it's that's not what I'm saying. It's like Usually you're sweaty in nogi, and this will work easier because there's not as much friction. So a good example is just like, um, like if you do like a roll through kimura from half guard to go into that kimura trap t, t position, that's that can be hard to do when there's no sweat and you just can't get your knee out, you can't get your ankle out. It's just too much. It's just too dry. But when it's you know after a round or two, it can be it's so much easier because it can just slide out. So yeah. I mean, it's a sweat is a factor in, in nogi for sure. Even in the gi, like, it does play a little bit of a factor, like, especially with the hands. Like, I don't know. Like, I get really, like, clammy hands. So when I start sweating, I find it really hard to hold on to things. Yeah, yeah. Well, another annoying uh, type of, not type of person, but just an annoying thing is when people wear, when people wear gis that are too thin or or they're too thick. Like, too thin is really hard to uh, take a grip, but, but so is too thick. It's yeah. like not um, not where it's like a huge deal, but thin bothers me more because I cannot get like a good like collar grip on it because it's just there's not enough material to grab. The globe trotter geese. Basically. I hate those geese. Yeah. I hate those yeah. globe trotter geese. Yeah, they're hard to grab a hold of. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of our black belts has one, and and yeah, you know, I love him. He's a great dupe. I hate his gee. And same yeah. with the judo gee too. Like they're so thick, it might be yeah. hard to get a grip on too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Kind of a similar one too is uh, the nogi guy who wears the loose t-shirt. Oh, oh, I yeah. fucking hate that, man. Dude, it sits like, on your face and you're inhaling through it. Well, yeah. My last couple competitions uh, in Noki, I lost the same guy in the absolute. Shout out Christian Simmerling. He beat me before and I didn't shout him out on here. He's a really nice dude. Really good grappler. Uh, super hard to beat. But he wears like in Noki, like a loose t-shirt. And all three of my matches with this guy, it's like I'm being fucking waterboarded by <laughs> yeah. this thing as yeah, I'm underneath. Dude. I'm like, I'm trying to breathe. And I'm like, I'm sucking in a shirt. Like, <laughs> I can't breathe. Sweat's dripping in. I'm like... Like, I don't get me wrong. He's controlling me from the top. He's like, he's doing good jujitsu, but I'm also being (laughs) smothered by a sweaty rag while Uh, getting ragdolled. So it just, it it compounds when you're losing and you're underneath someone and you're being waterboarded by a sweaty shirt. It just makes it twice as bad. And you're like, man, I just don't want to be here anymore. (laughs) Yeah. That that reminds me of another annoying guy. The guy that shows up straight from work that smells like shit. That is horrible especially construction workers yeah. yeah it's all like that's usually 
if they have like a desk job, probably they don't, they don't stink too bad. But if yeah. you're doing physical labor all day and then you come to jujitsu at night, um, and you you're probably gonna reek if you don't shower first. Yeah, for sure. There's yeah. nothing if, worse than smelling like onions after you roll somebody. If you really can't shower before, like let's say like you work until six fifteen and you got to get to jujitsu for six thirty or something, like at least like some gum, a breath mint or something, wash your hands. Uh, some deodorant in your bag would be great. Like add a new layer of that. Uh, our gym has like a foot bath too. So you can like wash your feet before you get on the mats. Do you that if your gym has it, if not buy a foot bath. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to bring some baby wipes with you? Yeah, exactly. Right? And yeah. put on Are those defense wipes, like the defense yeah. soap ones. Those things are supposed to be good. Yeah. Like anything really just do something about this, the stink. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. Sometimes people smell like bad, but not bad enough where I feel like I need to comment to them because it's hard. Like, I don't want to have to talk to them about it. Right. So if they really stink, it's like, I have no choice, but if they just smell just bad enough, I'm like, shit, I don't really <laughs> want to tell you it's not that bad, but it's still not great. Uh, yeah, there's like, yeah, I've rolled a couple of people recently like that. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing worse than like smelling afterwards um, like them, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant about the onion comment. Yeah. I'll go to roll somebody and uh, afterwards I'll smell like a, you know, a sorted sub sandwich or something like that. It's fucking terrible. Oh, yeah. Was the, no Sorry. Oh, go I was ahead. Say, you ever have the opposite? Where you roll with a guy and like halfway through the round, you're like, this guy smells weirdly good. Like, oh, yeah. I'm usually the good so smell. Good. <laughs> yeah, that, that happened today, actually. <laughs> I was rolling with uh, Neil. He's uh, a white belt at our gym. And I was just like, holy crap, like, you smell really nice. It, yeah, it was just ghee. Like, it smelled, like, uh, like really fresh. Freshly you know? washed. Yeah. yeah. And, like, that's great, you know. But when it smells like shit, not, not so great. <laughs> and sometimes, like, I've stunk. And I, I can tell and I say sorry. Like, if I, like, left my ghee, uh, not my ghee, my, uh, my no-ghee stuff, like, in my bag, and then it kind of festered and, like, starts to stink, and then I wash it after, like, it still stinks after. And then it's like I'm wearing it. I'm like, crap. I, I smell bad. I'm so that like, guy. Yeah, it's like no, nothing I can do but apologize. Like, you know, sorry. Like, I know I smell a little bit. It's like, it's not me. It's like, you know, it's my nogi stuff that um, is clean, but it still reeks. Yeah, we've all been that guy once or twice. Yeah, or like forgetting deodorant. That's only happened like once or twice. And just like, oh no, you know. <laughs> yeah. I carry everything in my bag. Oh yeah, another annoying type of person. Uh, people that wear uh, muscle shirts in nogi. Because oh yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to feel their armpit. I don't their <laughs> ar yeah, or feel their armpit hair. I don't want to see it. Like, let's just like, yeah, I don't want to, that's, it's just gross. You know? Is it, oh, is it annoying for you guys? I'll ask a question to roll with guys with big, long beards. Is um, it fucking gross or what? It's not gross. And I wouldn't say it's annoying, but you can be honest. 100% yeah, no, honest. I would say it's like maybe like. 10% annoying just when I'm trying to like get a choke in and I have to be aware not to pull your beard. Uh, you, can, right? you can go ham. Yeah. yeah. That was happening today. Actually, I was trying to choke you, but I had to be careful. I don't want to pull your beard. So it's not like a big deal. You okay. know? Yeah. It's, not it's worse. Deal. It's worse than the gi when you're trying to get like a collar grip. And I'm like, I really don't want to grab a fistful of beard, but like I do need this grip. So <laughs> yeah, I don't mind at all. You got to do what you got to do. Oh, like that another type of person that's annoying, people that grab your skin. Like yeah. they're taking gi grips, but that's not just my gi, that's also my skin, bro. Like stop grabbing my skin. <laughs> yeah, especially under the arm or something like that. Or if they yeah. have nails, clip your nails. I've been so many times I've been, you know, scratched by nails. Yeah, exactly that. That's an easy one to fix. Like tell them like, you know, hey your your nails are too long. It's it's like harder to tell people like, hey man, like you keep grabbing my skin. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not necessarily illegal either, you know? So yeah. It's hard to be like, don't do that, but it's also like, yeah, please don't do that. You know, that, that hurts. <laughs> it could be and awkward. Yeah. The nails is definitely like, please, God, trim your nails. And like, I don't know what some people do when they cut their nails, but like some people like just file a little bit after yeah. you cut them because you cut them into razor blades. Like I was, I dropped into another gym like not too, too long ago and I got like a fingernail on my finger and it like cut me down to the bone. Like mm. it's, my finger is scarred from this guy's fingernail and it just sliced like from knuckle to knuckle. I was like, what the hell do you like file your nail into like a point? And try and slice me with it. Like, Jesus, yeah. just yeah, cut them. Be safe. I got a really good, uh, like cut of my, my head, my forehead from someone's toenail and they had just cut them, but they were just razor sharp, Yeah, you know? So yeah, I saw that Instagram post you had back yeah, in the day. That was a yeah. big ass chunk of my skin, you yeah. know? And, like that's like, you know, I, we're doing a combat sport. Accidents happen, but like that sucks. Like that sucks to have a big chunk of your skin gone. You yeah, know? yeah. The thing is, like, of... yeah, accidents happen, but 
there's also a lot of preventable accidents and you know like just like you know sometimes you're going to move and someone's arm will get caught or something stuff like that happens but just having like well-kept finger and toenails is like literally one of the easiest ways to prevent an injury just just take care of your nails it's so easy to do well all of this is common sense but apparently sense isn't very common these days you know what i mean like it's this is all pretty basic stuff yeah even if you don't do jujitsu like even if you don't do it at least still smell good uh don't have razor sharp nails like talons you know yeah. and uh yeah and just be a good person it's like not that freaking complicated yeah. but people are weird out there but uh yeah who else is annoying it's gonna be a weird of- one Oh, I was gonna, I'll oh, go ahead. Go ahead. One. It's yeah. not super jujitsu related, but like when people show up to the gym for the first time, I always try and shake their hand. The people whose handshake is just like a complete limp, wet noodle in my hand. It's so mm. uncomfortable. Please, like, give me a good handshake, <laughs> or just be like, I don't want to shake your hand, man. I don't know why. It's not a jujitsu thing. That's just like a weird pet peeve of mine. So I'm gonna throw it in here. So that I know. Well, sometimes people they squeeze too hard too, and yeah, like, they're I'm, trying to be yeah. big bro. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not a wuss, but it's like, please, like, why are you why are you squeezing my my hand so hard? Especially, I remember I hurt my wrist uh, like a year ago, and then I remember like doing like like you know shaking hands with like in the lineup, and like some people just grab so hard, and like I didn't want to like not shake their hands because you know you got to do what you got to do, but man, some of them were just like, you don't need to squeeze that hard. Like my hands like broken right now <laughs> because of you. So thanks, man. <laughs> I would much prefer that over the like flaccid hand that they just stick out. Oh, like, yeah. Have yeah. some rigidity. But some, sometimes it happens too. I hate when this happens. When I go to shake someone's hand and we don't meet at the perfect right <laughs> yeah. t- at the perfect right time and yeah. then I can't get it like, uh, you know, perfectly in there. And, and you're moving. So you yeah. can't go back and do it. You're just, ah. Yeah, you go by. Yeah. And, well, and not even in just jujitsu, just just in general. Like when you go and like only they only kind of get like your fingers, so it may it makes it like you're doing this like wuss handshake. But it's like <laughs> I, I didn't I never intended for this. Like you just you started squeezing too early. Yeah, it's, it's the same with the you go to fist bump and and they go to slap or you shake your hand. I've shaked so many fists. Like oh, yeah. I, I fuck that up all the time. Well, what's with that? Why do some people they, they, instead of slapping and bumping, they just slap and slap? Yeah, you know? no, I don't do that. I slap. Them yeah, like, I don't want to. I don't want to bump your your flat hands. <laughs> yeah. You know, like don't do that to me. Like, I just, I just want to do a regular slap and bump. You know. Yeah, I don't get that one. It. Uh, oh, but on the topic of handshakes, I dropped into a gym uh, for some like morning training the other day, and I guess certain I won't throw them under the bus, but uh, certain like gym affiliations they had like a a handshake that like a weird secret handshake that they do with like people who are affiliated with that gym. And they all tried to shake my hand this way. And they're like, it's like a one finger, like interlocks, but I, I don't know this weird, super secret, like Gracie handshake thing. And I just thought all these people were giving me like the weirdest, like stupid fucking handshake. I'm like, what? There's no way there's like eight people in a row are just incapable of shaking my hand correctly. Like, clearly, <laughs> am I doing something wrong? That is kind of weird. Was, yeah, it was freaking me out. I thought I was, like, having a stroke. I'm like, am I forgetting how to shake people's hands? Like, they keep jamming a finger into me, and, like, it was really confusing. Yeah. But, yeah, then I found out there's, like, a secret handshake. So maybe yeah, that's well, something Limitless needs. We need our <laughs> secret handshake. No, it makes it too confusing when people do stuff like that. Like, even when people do, like, um, like sometimes, you know, people you go to shake their hand. and people they like that. Yeah, where they do like, you know, they do like more stuff after and do like the oh, yeah. come in close. Like, I don't know what you want right now. <laughs> so, and I don't want to make it awkward. So, like, I don't, I'm just kind of trying to go with the flow of like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I hate that. And I'm so like, um, yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel awkward. So, I wish people wouldn't do that. Just like a standardized uh, handshake is like, we just got to stick to that. So, we have no awkwardness. Yeah. I think once you get past a certain age, just a standard handshake is what you should do yeah 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 instead of like i don't know it's like a handshake and then like a finger grab maybe a fist bump after maybe coming you know what i mean like i don't know what to do (laughs) yeah but it's such a life you know i'd be okay just switching to fist bumps only fist bumps for like germ purposes shaking hands is like i'm sure you get it like when you go to tournaments and like you see a bunch of like fans and stuff and they want to shake your hand you're like I'm shaking like 30 people's hands today. Like this is super gross. I get it when I referee, yeah. man. Every competitor wants to shake your hand at the start of the match. And you're like, listen, you guys are all gross and sweaty. I'm not shaking 300 hands today and then trying to eat my lunch real quick. Like just fist bump, please. So I don't get the plague. 
Yeah, because we need. That's the same problem. If like you want to fist bump, they want to shake your hand. You don't know. You don't know what they're gonna try to do. You go to fist bump, they have their hand out. It's like oh shit, and then you change it to a to, to your hand being <laughs> they flat. They both change, yeah. and then it's like god damn it, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah, I just want to. I want a stress free life. Yeah, it makes you know? for an awkward moment for yeah. sure. I can't deal with stuff like that. So, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 if anyone meets me in a tournament or whatever, we can shake hands or we can fist bump. It doesn't it doesn't bother me either way. But like, just make it obvious what your intention is going to be. So yeah, come out with what you're yeah, going to do. Like really, I got to see it first, you know, <laughs> because I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to feel awkward. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, who else is uh, who else is annoying? I'm trying to think. Well, there's two. There's two. I mean, we kind of touched it on it already, but like people that stand for. Uh, Danahar and people that stand for uh, Gordon Ryan and I mean stand like uh, like Eminem like you know like, yeah, yeah yeah like not like stand but no like people like that like where they're just like obsessed with like you know them but there's so many different ways of doing something it's almost like a good comparison is you think about like the best guitarist right they all have, they all have different styles different ways ways of doing things and you can model yourself after you know your idol of whoever plays guitar but like it doesn't mean that what they're doing is like the only way and you can only learn that and everything else other people have is no good right yeah and if you keep going down the rabbit hole a lot of Danaher's stuff is marcelo garcia stuff is it not yeah yeah right like so it all goes it all goes back to other people and they just put their own spin on it and and someday you'll put your own spin on your teacher's moves right yeah that's one thing i find annoying uh online is some if i show something and someone's like Oh, that's Danahar's, you know, you're stealing that. And it's like, well, originally that's actually from Marcelo Garcia, you know? So like, what's the point of uh, saying that in the first place? And a lot of what I show is definitely from other people. A lot, a lot of what everyone shows is from other people. That's like, it's almost how jiu-jitsu, it is how jiu-jitsu became to be, right? Especially yeah. with like lineage when that was more important. You learn from someone else and then they learn from someone else. It's if you only use your own stuff, then you probably never really learned jujitsu, right? Yeah. If you if if you only your own stuff, like definitely there's things you can think of and do, uh, which can be unique to you, but probably someone else has done it. But like, if it's only your stuff, like you, well, you don't you don't do a scissor sweep, you don't do a you know a flower sweep, you don't like uh, do arm triangles, like you know what I mean? Like someone had to come up with this stuff first and then pass it along. So yeah. we're all borrowing borrowing moves and maybe adding a tweak or a twist to it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just like guitar. Someone's doing like you know hammer on. It's like that's their style. And you you show like a hammer on, and it's like oh no, you stole it from them. It's like no, no yeah. one would ever say that because these are just like techniques that like you know you use. So exactly. I mean, there's only so many variations of like what the body can do, and at some point, someone's probably done it. You know, whether it was on purpose or not. But like, I had like a very specific choke setup that I was using for a while, and I've. I watch an ungodly amount of like instructional and film content for matches. Like I, I spend a lot of my life just watching film and researching. Uh, I, that's how I get better, but I'd never seen anyone use this. And I was like, man, maybe I like am the first person to come up with this idea. And I was like really excited for a while. And then one of my students was like, oh yeah, there was a video of like that came out like last week where uh, Dan her did something like that. And I was like, what? Send it to me. And of course it's like, you know, I've been doing this for months and Dan her does it like a couple weeks ago and it's him showing almost the exact same thing I was doing. I was like, this son of a bitch stole my move. <laughs> like, so like really, you know, you may think you came up with someone or something. Someone's probably done it at some point, either on purpose or accident. Like it's very hard to invent a move in grappling because it's just ways the body moves. Yeah, I agree. There's like, there's been like many times in the past where I thought like, you know, I figured this out and this is really cool. This is my thing. And then I see it. Oh, someone else does it too. And then I've kind of learned from that. Well, I have learned from that, that absolutely. If you come up with something, it's already been done and yeah. uh, it's not unique to you. But like, it is cool too. like kind of figuring. Well, it is cool. Yeah. Figuring stuff out, out on your own. Um, but yeah, you can't really take claim to anything because everything's been done for the most part. I mean, like a buggy chokes kind of a good example both ways where um i think it was done like actually like 10 years ago or more like the first time but like it really became into popularity as this like new thing which absolutely it was but it if you look back far enough you can find it and find other stuff just like that so like that's one that really took the jiu-jitsu world by storm um because it was just such a unique new thing to and and look now who does buggy chokes now you know you know you rarely see them not that they're not used at all but now 
there's a tool in the toolkit rather yeah. than like um this like big thing it's like oh my god but, but yeah it was at that point it was like oh my god this is this is pretty cool yeah i remember when somebody used to absolutely hate them and then he started doing them yeah that's that's yeah. an annoying kind of person right there yeah, oh, yeah. I, I don't know i don't know who would talk shit about a technique they've never tried and then fall in love with it once they try it for the first time yeah. i i'm not sure what kind of absolute degenerate human being that would be but yeah yeah, certainly well, not on this podcast. Yeah, actually, this reminds me. Um, I had a comment today. Someone said that they would rather lose than pull guard. And so, people that are like shit on guard pulling, they're annoying too. Because absolutely, like I think it's best to to learn everything, become a complete martial artist, learn takedowns, everything. But it's not a big deal to pull guard, and not everyone has the time to learn absolutely everything either. Um, and it's not a big deal if you don't have great takedowns, if you do jujitsu and you, you pull guard. And I would rather win over anything. Like, yeah. I don't care. I don't care if I had to pull guard. I'm not, I, I want to win, bro. Like That I, comment makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. I'd rather lose than pull guard. That makes zero sense at all. Yeah. And then, and does he like, does he really mean that? Like, what if, like, um, you know, what if he, would he pull guard and he could have won, but instead – he gets like taken down really bad. He gets his ass kicked really bad, you know, maybe in front of his girlfriend or something like that. And it's like, is that really what you wanted? Because you're too f afraid just to sit to your butt. Is it yeah. that big of a deal? It like, those are the same type of people we're talking about before, kind of like uh, the alpha male type, you know, pulling guard, you know, you got to be a wuss to do it. It's yeah. like, no, nah, bro. Like, we're just getting to the ground faster. Well, like, like, it's like fine. My, Mikey Musumeki was saying in, in an Instagram reel that uh, he's not a great wrestler. So he's just going to sit and butt scoot because if he tries to wrestle, he's going to end up on his ass anyways. And to him, it's the most efficient way to get there and to try to submit somebody. So I, I agree with him. If you're not a great wrestler and you don't want to do wrestling, yeah, maybe sitting to your butt is the best thing to do because you're going to get planted on it if you try to wrestle a wrestler. Yeah, I mean, people can do what they want, and that's the thing. It's like people don't, don't need to criticize other people, which is what we're doing this whole yeah, podcast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Got, that's what, I got like two points for that one. And number one is like most injuries, like serious injuries in jujitsu, come from the standing to ground portion. From starting on your feet to going to the ground is where most of the serious injuries tend to occur. A lot of the time, pulling guard is literally just a way to protect the longevity of your body. I mean, like I can wrestle. Uh, I'm not bad at it. I like doing it. I actually find it really fun. But when I'm in the absolute division of a tournament and I'm against a guy who's 245, I don't really want to wrestle with that guy because even if I win the wrestling, two bodies are now crashing to the floor together. And if I somehow end up with an arm underneath this guy, there's, you know, with my weight and his weight combined, we got over 300, close to 400 pounds of weight falling on my arm. It's a really good way to get injured. So sometimes it's like, a, hey, I'm just going to pull because I don't feel like having this weight come crashing down on me. Uh, and the other thing is, if it's within the rules, why not? Why can't I do it? Like I had a student compete the other day uh, and it was, if you pulled guard, it counted as a takedown for the other guy. And they were like the third round of this tournament. And I was watching the other guys compete, like the guy that he was going to fight. And I was like, man, you are so much better than this guy once the match is on the ground. Why would you waste your energy and time standing up? Because if you stand with this guy for f four minutes out of a five minute match and then he gets a takedown, now you don't have enough time to get that two points back. And you're probably tired, but you've now wasted the time. Pull guard right away on the guy. And now you have a full five minutes. You're going to submit him. I can almost guarantee it. You're so much better. And by just adapting to the rule set and going like, hey, I'm better on the ground than this guy. I want to do jujitsu. I'm not going to waste my time and put myself in a position where I might lose. Like at the end of the day, when you sign up for a competition, the goal is to win. Is it not? It's not to like, I'm going to sign up for this competition because I want to be cool and try to wrestle. Like unless it's a wrestling competition, your goal should be to win. And if wrestling is a part of the way you plan to win, then good, do that. But if the rules allow you to pull guard and that's your best avenue to victory, take that. Yeah, I mean, it's like GSP uh, when he was fighting. He would fight people where, um, like, he would build game plans where they're the weakest, right? So yeah. um, he would take people down that were good strikers, people that were good at grapplers, uh, good grapplers, you know, he'd strike with them. Like, he would always take the fight to where he had the most advantage, right? And he gets commended for that because that's that's smart. You know, that's good uh, sports IQ, good fight IQ. 
But then it's like people have the opposite mentality. It's like, and those people probably, a lot of them probably suck at wrestling anyways. And they're like criticizing other people for pulling guard. Um, yeah, it just, uh, it makes no sense to me. Like you do what you want, right? I, th I think wrestling is great. I really enjoy it, but um, yeah, I don't care if someone pulls guard. I pull guards often too. It, I think it shows confidence too. It's like, I'm confident in my guard. I'm going to pull guard and uh, and kick your ass. Do you think that's more of an old school mentality? Don't pull guard because it was more, let's say back 20 years ago, it was more self-defense based because being on the bottom, you're going to get hammered with strikes or stomped in the face or whatever. Do you think that's why pulling guard was so frowned upon? I think so. But at the same time, is pulling guard bad in a fight? I don't know. It could be, it could be good. Like, uh, if, if anyone's ever been in a self-defense situation, maybe someone had a knife or something like if you pulled guard, wouldn't like your torso be farther away from the person's like knife. Right. So that could be a good game plan. Yeah. You know, it could be, yeah. you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm just saying it could yeah. be good. Well, well, I don't know if I ever get in a, in a, in a fight or a knife fight, maybe I'll pull guard and yeah. see how it goes. See how it goes. So like, like that, could, if someone, if someone's successful with that, that could really disprove all this, like, Oh, you wouldn't pull guard in a fight. Maybe you would. I mean, it's like That's any combat point. sport. The best game plan is the game plan that gives you the highest probability of victory. And, you know, like, let's say, I don't know how you'd ever test this, but like, let's say you're a person who absolutely cannot take a punch. Like, if you get punched on the feet, you're going to get knocked out. You know it. Like, maybe you've been knocked out a ton. Probably standing on the feet is a really bad idea. Like, pulling guard, even if it isn't, that, let's say, a good strategy... Like, let's say you pull guard in a street fight, like probably not a great strategy. You might get hit, Maybe. but if it's your best strategy, that's the one you got to use. Like if you have to fight someone and you know, you can't take a punch, but you have a ground game, I'm going to sit, you know, you might not win, but the best strategy is the one that gives you the highest probability. There's no such thing as a strategy that's a hundred percent foolproof and can't lose. So, uh, it's, this is like something I go over with my students a lot when it comes to competition is like don't look for the perfect strategy that's going to win you every single match. Look for the strategy that gives you the best percentage of winning. If that's pulling guard, that's what you have to do. That gives you the best chance of winning, do it. If it's wrestling, that gives you the best chance of winning, do it. Yeah. Whatever, you know, you got to win. I mean, Joey, if you if you're if like you were in a room with Mike Tyson and he won he was mad at you. He wanted to kick your ass. He was down to fight. Would you uh, try to take him down? Would you strike with him? Or could it actually be a good idea in that scenario to uh, pull guard? And then, you know, you could throw up kicks. You could, uh, you know, pull him into it, closer into your guard, go for submissions or control his arms. Like, what do you think the path of least resistance and the, and the path of, like, victory would be? Do you, what, what would be smartest? Do you think that could be a good uh, game plan against Mike Tyson? Oh, I'm sitting instantly. Instantly. I mean, sure, people will say like, oh, yeah, if you sit, he can still hit you. But there is a difference. Like anyone who's trained MMA, there's a difference in the body mechanics of hitting someone with like ground and pound or hitting them when they're on the ground than hitting someone who's also standing. And if a guy has trained his entire life to hit people who are standing, like, you know, and especially like with a size, like he's going to hit me and it's going to hurt. At least if I pull guard, you know, if he goes to hit me, maybe I can trap an arm, you know. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to beat him, but I'm saying my best chance to beat him would be to sit and bring the fight to the area where I have the largest advantage. Yeah. And and what is a guard, right? A guard protects you. Your legs protect you. Uh, you keep your feet in front of them. It creates the most amount of distance, makes it hard for them to uh, do ground and pound. Right. But when you're standing, uh, you don't have your legs available to use as a guard. You only have your arms available to use as a guard, which uh, which you do in striking. But if you have no striking experience, your guard with your arms <laughs> is going to suck. And your guard with your legs probably is going to be more successful because you train that. Right. So I think that uh, guard pulling can be great. Uh, it can be a great street fight uh, thing to do if you need to. But. I mean, the, the big thing is don't get in fights to begin with. Yeah, exactly. You know, don't, I try to stay away. Yeah, don't piss off Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I think that's, like, I, I don't know how I didn't think of this one, but the guys who say things like that, that that definitely I find really annoying. It's And I think a lot of it is just, like, comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of, like, how combat works. Yeah, I agree. People People think they know until they find out. Yeah. So, and there's nothing more annoying than three people talking on a podcast about how annoying shit is. 
Yeah, I'm, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> this could be a, a one in the category, yeah. right? People you find annoying, people that do podcasts that shit on everyone else when they're hypocrites when they've done <laughs> these all these things in the past. Exactly. Anyways, right? So, or people talking about street fights that haven't been in street fights. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't at least. Uh, it's been a lot of years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Joey, have you been in a street fight before? Uh, one or two. Yeah, I, I can imagine to... you pissing someone off. With you know, <laughs> yeah, I piss a lot of people off. I, yeah. I can't avoid it, man. I still like. This is going to be a little side tangent, but uh, from some of the earlier podcasts where I may have said things that offended some schools affiliated with certain Gracies, um, I, man, I still get messages in my like Instagram DMs from people being like, "Come to my gym, my instructor will fuck you up," and I'm like. Like, bro, I'm not flying to fucking, like, Montana to fight your instructor at some local Gracie gym. Like, sure, he might beat me, but I'm definitely not doing that. Like, absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, I've invited people, like, people that are annoying like that. I've been like, okay, I'll pay for your flights. Come down. We'll make a video. And then what? all, all of a sudden, they change their tune. They just uh, they don't have the same energy they did before I offered them that. So, <laughs> See, at I least mean, you're bringing them to you. Like these people want me to go to them and fight their coach to like prove that their gym is good. But it's like, man, like you, you think I'm crazy. I'm going to fly alone to a city to fight your coach that leads your cult. Like if I beat him, someone's going to stab me in the parking lot. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're why would I do way. this? Yeah. See, I'm not that stupid. Yeah. It's lose, lose. Yeah. Like you'd have to be, you'd have to be pretty petty to like, uh, go all the way out there like spend that much of your time traveling just to uh comp- you know roll with someone's instructor because they like you said they can beat you right yeah. so oh, i did that reminds me though i did have a cool idea i want to we'll put it on the podcast someone probably steal it they can have it it's fine uh but like a youtube series so you know there's like a bunch of gyms that people think are like mcdojos or like people always complain i wanted to do like a It'd be like a fun video series where I travel the world going to gyms that people have accused of being like jujitsu McDojos or being like this black belt's not legit and just like go find out and like Mm -hmm. video review like, hey, this gym that people talk shit about, definitely not legit. This is a joke. Don't go here. Or like, hey, this gym that people talk shit about, guy's actually legit. I think that would be fun. People probably still hate me and I'd probably get stabbed for it. But (laughs) to me, that would be fun to watch. So I'd watch it. Yeah, when you do the tour, you should find out if that uh, Jordan teacher Jitsu guy is any good. You know, do do Dojo Storm. Yeah, Yeah. that'll be the uh, first one. Your first on the list. Yeah, I I think that that actually would be pretty interesting. I I think whether you did or did it or someone else, uh, well, it wouldn't work if you did it here at my, you know, at Limitless here. But if someone else did that and came here, I think that'd be a really cool video uh, for them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's been an hour. Hope everyone enjoyed the podcast and, uh, That's it. So if you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump, and we'll see you guys next time.